All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. So got a couple of questions coming in from various different people. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right into yesterday's worksheet uh, to be able to review, kind of help with clarification, kind of get us ready for our test that we're going to be starting tomorrow. All right. So the first question comes up is number three on the front. All right, and the big question that was on this one is a lot of us want to know, I'm reading the question right now, how do you figure out the average each day? Okay, so if you're looking at your worksheet, again, this is question three on the front, how do you figure out the average each day? Well, the days that I see according to the graph, and I'm looking right at it right now, is I see day one. I see day two, I see day three, I also see day four, all right? So at day one, looks like the cost, $50. Day two, $200. Day three, $225. And day four, I'd say it's about $325. So when we're looking at number three, you want to look at these numbers and figure out the average for each of the days. This is pretty, I think the hardest part for a lot of us is uh, the day three and the day four from what it sounds like with this comment on how to be able to figure out what each of those costs were. So I hope that helps that person who asked the question about number three on how do you figure out the averages, right? And then again, after this, you just find the average of the two. Okay, the next question. We didn't have any for four, didn't have any for five, didn't have any for six. I'm just going through the front of the worksheet just to kind of help out with this, okay? Um, none for seven, eight, or nine. All right, so that was the only question we had on the front. Didn't have anything else on the first page. Now I'm on page two. Okay, I'll push this to the side. Now we're on page two of the worksheet. Okay, so another question that came up for this one is this idea of the equation. All right, and this is coming live on the YouTube comment at this point now for Sophia. Sophia, this is your question right here that we're going to be answering, okay? Um, with regards to the equation, um, of the line of best fit, and I'll call it L-O-B-F for short, line of best fit. Okay. Sophia, when you have like, for example, number one on the back, right? And this is, uh, this is not going to be very accurate, obviously on my paper and pencil. Uh, but it seems like Sophia, our dots are kind of going in this, you know, downward trend. So I think what we need to do, Sophia, when we're looking at this, right, when we're making the line at best fit, you want to, again, ensure that this line kind of cuts through all the different points. Like for example, my red line is a pretty good line of best fit. Kind of follows the data, the data points, kind of follows the scatter plot. Now it comes to what Sophia is asking is, can you go over how to make the equation of the line? So what you're gonna have to do, Sophia, is the first thing I would figure out is what is your B? Okay. When you look at your equation, your line of best fit, where does it start here? If we were in class, something we would have talked about is this idea of highlighting this Y axis. I'm sure some of you are sitting here going, yeah, I remember doing that. Where on this axis does your line of best fit cross? From looking at number one, I think most of us are probably going to have our line almost at that dot in the top left-hand corner. I think a lot of us are going to have that. Okay, so what is that value? Well, when I look at the graph, it's a little bit above 1,200. Doesn't look like it's in the middle. So anything close to 1,200, I'm going to go out on a whim and maybe say 1,250. 
one, two, five, zero. I mean, that looks okay to me. It looks great. Obviously, it could be more precise potentially, but I'll I'll take that. All right. So this is my point here, Sophia, where my line crosses over. Now, again, as we talked about, we know that this is a positive. So part of it's going to be plus 1250 on my equation. That's the B. For the second part, making the M. Now, we know M is the slope, the distance that we move from one point to the next. So again, you have to kind of follow your line. If I start here, how much am I going down and to the right, and then down and to the right, and then down and to the right, down and to the right? This is most likely going to be somewhat different for some of us. Again, it really is going to come down to where do you have your line? The big thing for this one is that I know that I'm going down and to the right. And we know that down is negative and going to the right is positive. So when you're doing this, especially for this first one, this M is going to be negative number over a positive number for when you're making your equation. Again, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I wish I could be able to, Sophia, literally say, hey, this is what you need to do for this one. But again, I want to kind of guide you through the process. At this point, Sophia, you should just look at your line and see how much you're going up, down, left, or right. And there's your M. Okay. Now, a couple other ones. So this was the first three. Um, some people, that was number one. A lot of kids asked also about two and three. All right. And, and what does the slope of the equation mean? What we're talking about is, you know, we're trying to take you away from sitting here saying M is equal to, for example, this is not the answer for two and three. Uh, let's say 20 over one. That was something we did earlier in the year. Perfect, Sophie. I'm glad that helped. So again, talking about two and three. Earlier in the year, you would have said M is equal to 20 over one. You would have said B was equal to five, for example. Great. Wonderful. We're asking for you to go a step further. What does 20 represent? What does one represent? What does five stand for? Again, these numbers are not correct. However, I will explain it looking at problem one, two, and three. So the x-axis talks about age, and the y-axis talks about the television value. So for example, if I said that B was five, well, that means it would be, you know, five is the value of the TV. Now, when I come to 20 over 1, well, 20 is my y value. x is my 1 value. So this is 20 as the value of TV. And then that's over 1 as in age. So for two and three, yes, you're going to be able to find your M and B from problem one, but we want you to explain what it stands for. Again, for number one, it's going to be the value of the TV over the age. And then for number three, when they ask, what does the Y-intercept talk about? Well, it's the value of the TV. And since it's the Y-intercept, it's the starting value. Something to add on to that. Okay. We're starting at the B. All right, next question we have is kind of going down at the bottom now. Let me pull up this real quick. Six and seven. All right. So, again, the equation of the line. All right. What it's going to come down to is where your blue line is placed. With the Google Doc, you're able to click and drag that blue line to put it wherever you need it to be on the scatter plot. Okay. So, for example, in Ellie's scatter plot, okay, this is kind of where Ellie's is at, dot here. So, this is Ellie's graph. Get it centered. There we go. 
So for Ellie's line of best fit, I think it's a perfect fit kind of around this area. Again, please don't hold me precisely to where this blue line is, but this is a good line of best fit here. And, and again, kind of like what we talked about with, you know, earlier in this video, when I, when Sophia asked the question, how do I find that equation? Now we look at our blue line. Where is our M or what is our M? Where is our B? So in this one, it seems that the B is starting at zero. And then based off of where you have placed the line, you now have to figure out how much are you going up and to the right, okay? This graph is going up to the right, 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 and it keeps going. So up over right and as a reminder if you're going up that is positive and if you're going to the right that is also positive so when you are doing that movement of up to the right based off of where on your paper you have your blue line placed for ellie's you will count how much am i going up the Y axis is counting up by 50s. That's something to point out. That's something I'm noticing. So sure, if you know, if Steve, for example, says he went up one movement, right? Let me get a little bit closer so you can see that. If you're going to tell me that you went up one movement, unfortunately, you didn't actually go up one. You went from 50 to 100. That means that you went up 50. For example. Okay, not saying that up 50 is a correct value based off your line, but I just want to point that out. If you jumped up once on the graph, it is worth 50. If you move once to the right, potentially it could be 100. That's what the x axis is counting by. Okay, so this is how you would do Ellie's. All right. <clears throat> Other questions I had, again, it kind of goes back to that eight and nine. What, what the heck does eight and nine mean with regards to Ellie and Jamie's scatter plot? Okay. Well, the problem is talking about they want to look at their social media effects and the number of people that follow them and they have the scatter plot. Hmm, this equation sounds very familiar to what we did in class. So when, we, when I look at this, <clears throat> and I think, again, most of the kids probably watching this and all the kids that are working on this will probably actually understand what this graph is showing i mean if we look at the start jamie's graph is on the left where is jamie's graph starting from okay it where is her graph starting where is the first dot right kind of get a new piece of paper kind of look at that bear with me hang on So here's Jamie's graph. Okay. Question eight is asking, well, what does the y-intercept of Jamie's graph mean? Well, the y-intercept, again, as we know, we've been going over this for a while, for a while now. Y-intercept is B. B can be found on this line. So where does Jamie's scatter plot cross over on this line? at 100. 
So back in January, we would have said that B was equal to 100. However, that's not what the question is asking. They're asking, what does the y-intercept mean? What does it stand for? Again, we're talking about social media. At 100, it's talking about the number of people following Jamie at zero number of people followed Jamie. So we have people that are following Jamie and followed Jamie. So the y-intercept represents a number of people following Jamie. Then for the slope, we know that the slope, again, is the movement. All right, we're going up to the right. And again, based off of your graph, you'll have numbers. But as I go up, again, looking at that y-axis, as I'm going up, hold on, let's make sure it's all centered on the screen. Okay, as I'm going up the y-axis, this is the number of people following. Based off of my line, I'm going up. This is meaning that we are getting more people following Jamie, right? Jamie's got the clout, as you guys say. She's got the swagger. Get a different color pen. So we have an increase here. All right. Jamie is getting an increase in the number of followers because, again, if I turn it this way, just so we can see it straight on, the dots are going up. The number of following people following Jamie is increasing. At the bottom of this graph, now this is talking about the people that Jamie are following. So people are following Jamie. Great, wonderful. Everyone can follow Jamie. But how many people are Jamie following herself specifically, right? And as the number of people follow Jamie, the number that she follows also increases. So when we talk about the slope, we're talking about that we have more people following her. and the more people she's following, or that she followed. Super confusing, with an ING and an ED. Okay, this is what the slope is representing in eight. And the same thing is also gonna apply for nine. The only thing different is we're talking about Ellie. So Ellie will have a different number that she started with, but the slope is kind of going to be, again, the same thing, talking about the number of people that follow Ellie and the number of people that Ellie also then followed as well. Okay. Just give me a second, guys. I'm bouncing around GoGuardian just to make sure that I answered all of the questions.
All right. So looks like I got every question answered for all those people that are online now. Um, as soon as I end this video, I'll be in GoGuardian chat to answer any other questions that we may have um, for the assignments. Uh, if you go to Google Classroom underneath the digital learning topic, you will see that there is a new post. It's kind of presented as a question that is covering everything or tells you everything that will be on the test for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be starting it tomorrow. I want to stress that right now. We are starting it tomorrow. There are a few of you that start your schoolwork very early in the day. Your math teachers are available at 10 o'clock via GoGuardian to answer questions. Then there are also some of you that do not do work until later in the day. Math ends at 1.30. So from the 10 to 1.30 time slot for tomorrow, that is when your math teachers are available via GoGuardian to answer any and all questions. We would suggest that you start, potentially, if you're going to do math in the morning, start by doing the problems you know how to do, that you feel the most confident doing. And if you don't, flag it, move on. If you get done the test and it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, well, just pause it, come back to it at 10 o'clock, and then jump in GoGuardian and ask us the questions that you have for that specific question or those questions, and we'll answer them. It does not have to be completed tomorrow. We, As you can see in the Google Classroom, I believe we have it that it's due first thing Tuesday morning, but don't quote me in case I misspoke on that. Um, but you have time to get this test done, okay? It will be covering SP1, 2, and 3, clusters, outliers. That would be SP1. SP2 was the line of best fit. And then this third one we've been learning, which is kind of looking at the equation and understanding what each of the parts mean, understanding what B means, what does the M stand for, okay? All right, good luck on finishing the assignments, and I will talk to you in a minute on GoGuardian.